hey guys it's Rahim welcome back to the channel if you're new to the channel smash the subscribe button because I talk about property investment personal development and how to gain financial freedom in today's video we're going to talk about how to avoid being poor how I avoided being poor the 10 rules of money and making money work for you a lot lot harder instead of you working for it you see in order for you to be successful it's very important for you to know the money rules, how you can make money in a way that it works for you and how you can use it as an advantage where it could generate you a lot, 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 lot more money. So again, how do I avoid to be poor? If you want to learn about that, stay until the end of this video because I'm going to share everything with you. You know, you see, I learned about these skills. I've never implemented it. I was thinking, wow, this is just basic. Why would I really want to learn things like that? But what I realized was this is a very important thing. Write this down. Knowing without doing is the same without knowing, okay? Regardless how many knowledge you've got, what you've learned, you've been to so many property courses, property events, or business events, if you never implemented it, is it the coach's fault or your fault? I believe it's all about implementation. What I did basically, I did what everybody did, go into uni, because when I was young, I was told you need to go to school, college, university, get a degree, and then guess what? Work for a big, massive corporation that would pay you salary. That's exactly what I did when I started. So I went, get a degree, get a job, and obviously started working. And um, believe me or not, when I finished my university, I was only on 1,800 pounds a month. I'm even kind of ashamed to say that right now because I'm thinking, wow, 1,800, that's what I've done three years for at university. But hey, I stayed the course, finished the university, got a degree, and then end up earning um, 1,800 pounds. But I soon realized that wasn't a dream I was told. I realized that that salary, even if it's been increased, it's not gonna get me to where I want to get because as time goes, I'm gonna get my wife, get married, get kids, and get a house or get a mortgage. It becomes a lot, lot more expensive. And I don't think my salary would be increased that much in order to be able to have a bit more money left over for when um, I got paid. I learned that also from my manager because she was literally working ridiculous long hours, have so many expenses, massive mortgages, expensive cars to pay for. And she's just going round in circle, paycheck to paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. By the time the mom finished, she's broke, she's back borrowing money and all that sort of thing. I looked at myself, I said, that's not the life I want for me. So what I've then started looking at is what successful people do. What are the rules successful people do? And then I've been looking at these rules, but I've never implemented it. But then I take it all, I take it to myself. I said, I need to implement these rules if I really don't want to be how my manager is five to 10 years down the line. So what I start doing basically is to start living below my means. So what do I mean by living below my means? It's by living below what I was earning at that point because what I was doing at that point is spending lots of money on expensive trainers, expensive shoes, going out a couple of times a week, going to expensive restaurants, watching football games and all that sort of thing. It was just too expensive for me. So I was living way over my means. So I needed to change that. So the first thing I did is to segregate myself, is to separate myself from the people that were encouraging me to do things like that, like going clubbing, buying expensive things, going to parties, trying to get the best outfit in the party. I segregated myself from those people because I realized they were not good to me. They were only making me spend and spend and spend. That was the first thing I did segregating myself to have a different mindset. And the second thing I did is to look at my 1,800 pounds and set myself a target to save 30% of the 1,800 pounds, which was 540 pounds. So I was saving that money every single month. So what I did, I had an account, destroy the card, okay? Get the bank details, set a standing order every single month on the day I get paid, to go into my savings account. I don't even touch it, I don't even look at it. Literally, I just get it to do this. So I was living on 1,260 pounds a month. So that was my expenses, looking after me, my family, and everybody around me, okay? Which is what we, which is what the second law is, which is saving. So I consistently save. No matter what troubles come my way, I do not touch my savings. You know, someone rang me in Africa, something happened, or someone rang me in the UK, same thing, they've got problems. I said, sorry, bro, I know you got a problem. I haven't got money to help you out because I had a vision. Because I know once I've become successful, I can give back to charities, I can give back to my box, I can do so many stuff I wanted to do. But I wanted to be selfish at, at the beginning, so I continuously save. I save and save and save. So what I did is the next step from the savings I had, 
okay? I took some of that money, I went and educate myself. I went to a property course because I wanted to do properties because I've tried cryptos, I've tried Forex, I've tried stock and shares, trade them online. None of that worked for me because I realized I was gambling. I was not sure what other people may say for that, but for me, I thought I was gambling. So, But then I, I looked into property and realized this is a sustainable, safer option. So I went on in it, trained, educate myself, and I came back home. One of the most important thing I did, write this down, is to implement what I got, what they've got to share with me. Right? I implemented it. I looked at one thing that resonated with me, which was rent to rent, because I know I was broke. I didn't have money to buy houses, and I didn't even know how to raise funds back at the back of those days. I looked for rent to rent. So what I did basically, I took it up, up myself. I said I need to implement this strategy no matter what. So I came around. Come back home, start implementing, learning, doing things, going back, ref right and center, looking for deals. I didn't have any deal. I didn't have any deal. It took me about seven months to get my first deal. And when I got my first deal, I didn't have enough money at that time as well because I didn't want to use what I've got all of it. I, I spoke to my landlord back then because I used to live with my landlord. I told him I've got this property. If he's interested, he said, oh, yeah, why not you interested? After I've convinced him, obviously. So we've got that first property. So that was my first property. So I implemented what I've learned. I realized, whoa, this thing works, right? This thing really, really works. So because I wanted to save more and live below my means, I thought about something else. I went to my business partner, <laughs> my landlord happens to be my business partner. I went to him and said, look, um, I know we've taken this house, seven bedroom, we've converted into nine bedroom. How about if I can live in, the, in, that, in, that, in that property to look after the property to make sure it's been looked after nicely and all that sort of thing. Hoping that it can allow me to move in for free, right? By taking one room out, by, by me living in, in one of the rooms. He said to me, look, Raheem, you can do whatever you want, right? You can move into the house. I don't have a problem with that. I would love to have you there. But as long as I get my same profit, I don't have a problem with it. And you can rent the room where you're living in right now because obviously you are in contract. I'm thinking, wow, how is that going to happen? I can't. But what I did basically is to think outside of the box. I said, how about looking at the market and see how much I'm charging rent? So I went and looked at the market. I realized I was charging significantly below market rent as you know I'm just I'm just learning this thing so what I did basically and the benefit of that also taking these properties out I wasn't giving proper contract I only giving two month contract three month contract so I was in a better position at that point so what I did then basically still is when tenant move out first what I did is to divide the amount it cost to rent a room in that property so I divide that then to the number of remaining rooms which was eight rooms equally so I increase the rent in each room on that basis. So as tenants are moving out, I'm increasing the rent. They're moving out, I'm increasing the rent until it all fell in and then left myself a bedroom. So I moved into that house without actually paying any single rent. So I lived there rent free, bill free, everything free. So then guess what now? This is where the magic happens, right? My 30% savings become my expenses and my 70% become my savings, right? So my, my savings increase from 540 to 1260 if I've got my figures right. So I was saving that every single month. Every single month saving that. The only thing I use is 30% to go expenses, help family members and all that sort of thing. So I was living significantly below my mean. Well, I wasn't living under my expenses, okay? So that's how I was able to save. So what I then did, now I know rent to rent is working, okay? I got my second property, third property, fourth property, fifth property, and then the rest become history. I'm looking at it now, I was, out, I was on about 10 to 15,000 pounds a, a month. So life is happening for me, right? So what I did then at, at that time is when I start making that much money, I did one of the most important things, write this down. I did not upgrade my life. Do not upgrade your life once you started making money okay delay the gratification so what happens i still lived in that shared house got married bring my wife stayed in that bedroom okay literally living in that bedroom until obviously i got kicked out by my tenant when the baby arrived baby crying all the time then obviously tenant housemate did not like her so they had to kick me out so i moved out went to another five bedroom house Again, the same thing. Can I did not like crying, baby? And at that point, I got no choice. Bless my wife for allowing me to do that, right? And then we moved to a flat. So I was on 15 to 20K a month, but I did not upgrade my life, right? 
I go to the same restaurant, I go to the same supermarket, I drive the same car, I spend the same money, I do not do any, any crazy things, right? Even that get someone to flinch and understand I'm making that much money. I was living under the radar, significantly below my income. So what I then do, I start diversifying now. I've got my rental HMOs, I moved on to rental service accommodation, get multiple of rent to service documentation and I realize I've got in a portfolio now and that portfolio started to become a little bit of work for me. So what I then gain is to open an estate agency. So that estate agency then manages my property, right? Because it's gonna cost me to do that by employing someone to do it. And obviously you've got the shop to pay for, you've got the running cost. What I then did also start managing and lettings of a landlord's properties and helping them sell their houses as well. So then the proceed or the income I was getting from that part of the business was more than enough to pay for my staff and for the shop, okay? And for the running cost. So in essence, I've got the landlord's income to pay for the running of my own business. Again, that cost me nothing. I had an office where I can go and sit myself. I've got my staff working for me. And then obviously I was able then to generate income that, that way, getting income from my properties from the estate agency. And guess what I started doing? Then I start developing my own property portfolio, start buying my first buy to let, second buy to let, and then the rest is history. Okay, but before I did all of this, I did something drastically very, very important. I avoid bad debt because what happens once you start making money, you get tempted to buy expensive cars, going on holidays, taking credit card debts, and all that. So I stopped that, right? I went the opposite, I stopped taking bad debt. Anything that is bad debt, I don't touch, like buying a car, buying an expensive trainers through credit cards going expensive holiday using my credit card i did i stopped all that despite me being on 10 to 15k okay so i still rule live frugal i live parsimonious as kevin green says literally i was literally saving squeezing whatever juice i can get from my savings so i can improve and invest in my property portfolio in about six seven twelve months i was able to be financially free i sacked my boss and i started doing my own thing so i continuously improve my skills so what do i do to improve my skills once i start making money i do not hog the money like that or maybe invest in invest in buying property so what i did i improved the, I, I invest in me right i went on educating myself getting mentors and coaches to coach me so when i'm started doing my thing i don't need to go and google stuff youtube stuff i can ring someone straight away who can help me guide and expedite my process i don't have to google search anything absolutely nothing i don't need to google search okay i can ring someone who will help me i can learn from them what they've learned for 10 15 years in literally a couple of hours right that's what i did and then the next thing i did also is to copy and replicate what they're doing because what i did what i learned also successful people love to copy people right they copy people very very much and then guess what they replicate that make theirs better and the next thing i did basically obviously i've worked so so hard is to protect my wealth that's the most important thing you need to do right if you work so hard you need to protect it aren't you so what i did basically i have the right insurance we have health insurance life insurance car insurance disability insurance so they so 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 that then it helps for any eventuality right if anything happens not just my property portfolio generates me passive income every single month but also if something goes worse i've also got insurance companies that can look after me when things goes bad and it's very understand it's very good for you to understand this because it would help you drastically and obviously you need to create your own basic estate planning as well i created that just to put me in a better place and the other thing i did also is to limit my financial exposure so what i did if you remember i started to do rent to hedge HMO, I moved from rent to HMO, did rent to service accommodation, from rent to service accommodation, I got my estate agency, from my estate agency, I then built my development company, from my development company, got my renovation company, and now I share my passion and my vision to train people to start and scale in real estate business using the same proven formulas I use to get me to where I am today. And also the next thing I did, I network and build relationship with people. Very important to network and build relationship with people. Serve people genuinely. Don't go out there serving because you expect them to pay you handsomely because you expect them to give or you expect them to give you something. Go out there and serve them 
drastically in order to add value in their life. One of the most important things that helped me avoid being poor is staying disciplined. I stayed disciplined when the, when the going got really, really tough, okay? When I was looking for the deals, when I, was in, when I didn't get to have any deal for one month, two months, three months, four months, I still keep doing the same thing. Six months, nothing. And guess the time that I thought I'm about to give up, I can jack up. I got my first deal. So stay in discipline, consistent, not allowing any of these noises to go around you is what gets you to avoid poverty. It's what gets you to determine your life and your future for you and your family. I really hope this video has been helpful. If this video has been helpful, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more amazing property investment tips, financial freedom, and personal development. I look forward to sharing next video.